Dear students, Namaskar. I hope that you all must be in sound health and must be continuing your studies with great zeal and enthusiasm. Children, today we are going to discuss Chapter 14 of Class 6 Science, Water. Let us first see what we have studied earlier. Why do we need water? From where do we get water? Which is the main source of water? Now let us see what we are going to learn today. Uses of water, sources of water, water cycle, back to the oceans, floods and droughts, conservation of water. First of all, let us see where do we use water. We use water for various activities like drinking, cooking of food, cleaning, bathing, washing of clothes and manufacture of various materials like paper. Sources of water Rain, oceans, seas, ponds, lakes, rivers and wells are some sources of water. Children, do you know that about two-thirds of the earth is covered with water? Most of this water is in oceans and seas. The water in the oceans and seas has many salts dissolved in it. The water is saline, so it is not fit for drinking and other domestic, agricultural and industrial needs. But the water that we use is not salty. So, from where do we get this water? Water cycle To understand water cycle, let us perform an activity. Take two similar plates. Place one of the plates in sunlight and keep the other under shade. Now pour equal amount of water in each of the plates. You can use a cap of a bottle to measure water. Make sure that water does not spill over. Observe the two plates after every 15 minutes. Does the water seem to disappear? From which plate does it disappear first? What is the source of heat for this evaporation? During the daytime, sunlight falls on the water in oceans, rivers, lakes and ponds. The fields and other land areas also receive sunlight. As a result, water from all these places continuously changes into vapor. However, the salts dissolved in the water are left behind. In this activity, we find that water also disappeared from the plate kept in the shade, though it could have taken more time. Does the heat from the sunlight reach here? Yes, during the daytime, all the air surrounding us gets heated. This warm air provides heat for evaporation of water in the shade. Thus, evaporation takes place from all open surfaces of water. As a result, water vapor gets continuously added to air. However, Evaporation of water is a slow process. Let us now understand how are clouds formed. Take a glass half filled with water. Wipe the glass from the outside with a clean piece of cloth. Add some ice into the water. Wait for one or two minutes. Observe the changes that take place on the outer surface of the glass. From where do water drops appear on the outer surface of the glass? The cold surface of the glass containing iced water cools the air around it and the water vapor of the air condenses on the surface of the glass. The process of condensation plays an important role in bringing water back to the surface of earth. How does it happen? As we go higher from the surface of the earth, it gets cooler. When the air moves up, 
it gets cooler and cooler. At sufficient heights, the air becomes so cool that the water vapor present in it condenses to form tiny drops of water called droplets. These tiny droplets that remain floating in the air appear to us as clouds. Children, now let us know about water cycle. Water from ponds, lakes, rivers and oceans changes into water vapor due to heat of the sun. This process is called evaporation. Plants absorb water through roots. Some part of this water is used by plants to prepare food by the process of photosynthesis. Remaining water is lost by the plants in the form of water vapor through leaves and the process is called transpiration. These vapors move up and condenses or cools down and form tiny droplets of water. These tiny droplets come together and form clouds. This process is called condensation. When these drops of water become heavy, they begin to fall on the surface of the earth in the form of rain, hail or snow. Thus water in the form of water vapor goes into air by evaporation and transpiration, forms clouds and then comes back to the ground as rain, hail or snow. This process is called water cycle. Children. Have you ever thought that what happens to the water that rain and snow bring to different regions of earth? Snow in the mountains melts into water. This water flows down the mountains in the form of streams and rivers. Some of the water that falls on land as rain also flows in the form of rivers and streams. Most of the rivers cover long distances on land and ultimately fall into a sea or an ocean. A part of the rainwater gets absorbed by the ground and seems to disappear in the soil. Some of this water is brought back to the air by the process of evaporation and transpiration. The rest seeps into the ground. Most of this water becomes available to us as groundwater. Open wells are fed by groundwater. Groundwater is the source for many lakes as well. It is also this groundwater which is drawn by a hand pump or a tube well. The more hand pumps or tube wells that are used in an area, the deeper we need to dig to find this groundwater. In those areas where the land has little or no vegetation, the rainwater flows away quickly. Flowing rainwater also takes the top layer of the soil away with it. There are few areas where most of the land is covered with concrete. This reduces the seepage of rainwater into the ground, which ultimately affects the availability of groundwater. Rainfall In our country, most of the rainfall occurs during the monsoon season. Rains bring relief especially after hot summer days. The sowing of many crops depends on the arrival of monsoon. However, excess of rainfall may lead to many problems. Heavy rains may lead to rise in the level of water in rivers, lakes and ponds. The water may then spread over large areas causing floods. Floods cause extensive damage to crops, domestic animals, property and human life. Rains also affect the animals living in the soil. Children. What happens if it does not rain for a long period? The soil continues to lose water by evaporation and transpiration. Since it is not being brought back by rain, the soil becomes dry. 
the level of water in ponds and wells of that region goes down and some of them may even dry up. The groundwater may also become scarce. This may lead to drought. In drought conditions, it is difficult to get food and fodder. Children, now we will see how can we conserve water. Only a small fraction of water available on the earth is fit for use of plants, animals and humans. Most of the water is in the oceans and it cannot be used directly. The total amount of water on earth remains the same, but the water available for use is very limited and is decreasing with over usage. The number of people using water is increasing with rising population. In many cities, long queues for collection of water are a common sight. Also, more and more water is being used for producing food and by the industries. These factors are leading to shortage of water in many parts of the world. Hence, it is very important that water is used carefully. We should take care not to waste water. Rainwater harvesting One way of increasing the availability of water is to collect rainwater and store it for later use. What happens to the rainwater that falls in places that are mostly covered with concrete roads and buildings. It flows into the drains, isn't it? Collecting rainwater in this way is called rainwater harvesting. The basic idea behind rainwater harvesting is catch water where it falls. There are two techniques of rainwater harvesting. The first technique is Rooftop Rainwater Harvesting In this system, the rainwater is collected from the rooftop to a storage tank through pipes. This water may contain soil from the roof and need filtering before it is used. Instead of collecting rainwater in the tank, the pipes can go directly into a pit in the ground. This then seeps into the soil to recharge or refill the groundwater. Another option is to allow water to go into the ground directly from the roadside drains that collect rainwater. Summary Water is essential for life. Water vapor gets added to air by evaporation and transpiration. The water vapor in the air condenses to form tiny droplets of water, which appear as clouds. Many tiny water droplets come together and fall down as rain, snow or hail. Rain, hail and snow replenish water in rivers, lakes, ponds, wells and soil. The circulation of water between ocean and land is known as the water cycle. Excessive rains may cause floods, while lack of it for long periods may cause droughts. There are two methods of rainwater harvesting, rooftop rainwater harvesting and roadside drains that collect water. Children, now I will ask a few questions and I hope that you might be knowing the answers. My first question is, Write a short note on water cycle. Water from lakes, rivers and oceans change into water vapor due to heat of the sun. Water is also lost by the leaves of the plants by the process of transpiration. These vapors move up and condenses to form tiny droplets of water. These tiny droplets come together and form clouds. When these drops of water become heavy, they begin to fall on the surface of the earth in the form of rain, hail or snow. Thus, water in the form of water vapor goes into the air 
and comes down in the form of rain, hail or snow and this is called water cycle. My next question, if it does not rain for long time, then depletion of groundwater may lead to dash. And the right answer is droughts. My next question, excessive rains may cause dash. And the right answer is floods. With this, we complete our chapter and I hope that you must have listened to the chapter carefully and understood it well. Children, stay home, stay safe, keep learning and keep growing. Thank you.